kindly view this video patiently so as to understand the concept of immunochromatography. The immunochromatographic assays are also known as the lateral flow dipstick immunoassays or simply the strip test. They are the rapid tests for the simple devices which are intended to detect the presence or absence of a target and a light in a sample and without the need of specialized and costly equipment. Now to understand the word immunochromatography well, we divide this word into two parts. The first is the word immune and the second is the word chromatography. Here the immuno means that an immune reaction is occurring between an antigen and an antibody and the chromatography word contains the word chrome which means color. So what is the importance of color in this essay? Here the importance of color is that the results are interpreted by reading the colored lines in the kits. Which is easily seen in this picture you can see that there are two lines. The first is the C or the control line and the second is the T or the test line. Here we see colored lines only in the control and no such colored lines are seen in case of test. So by knowing the presence or absence of these colored lines we can detect or interpret the results of the kit. So friends this is how this kit looks like and this is the outer covering or the cassette of the kit. But the real device lies beneath it. And before moving to the principle of the chromatography, it is very important to understand the structure of the kit. So this is the strip like structure which is present inside this cassette like covering and it is divided into various parts based on their functions. The first and the foremost part is the sample pad upon which the liquid sample is being dropped. And this is called sample pad. Why? Because simply the sample is being dropped and in this outer cassette or the covering it is present in the form of the window. Now adjacent to the sample pan is the conjugate pan in which we drop the detector conjugate. So the first step is that we are putting the sample and the second step that we are putting the detector conjugate. The sample if we assume it is positive then the sample will contain the antigen and the detector conjugate will contain the labeled antibody. What labeled? It is labeled with colloidal gold. So it is colloidal gold labeled antibody and that is why the area upon which this uh, which absorbs this conjugate detector conjugate that area is called the gold conjugate pan. The next part of the kit is the nitrocellulose membrane. The next part is the nitrocellulose membrane which contains a surfactant that makes it hydrophilic. There are two lines on the nitrocellulose membrane. The first is the capture or the test line and the second is the control line. These lines can be seen in the outer covering also which I told you before that is the T is the test line which is not seen here and the C is the control line which is seen in the form of colored line. And this is the sample pad so as we move towards the from the sample pan towards the nitrocellulose membrane what we get first is the test line followed by the control line. So the test line determines the positive or the negative test and the control line is used to determine the validity of the test and the proper technique of the assay. It means that if we do not get the control line or a colored line on this control so it means that the either the test is not valid or the technique of the assay used is not proper. The last part of the kit is the absorbing pad and it is called absorbing pad because it absorbs the excess of the liquid sample which is left unused. So this was the structure of the kit and now we come to the principle of the immunochromatography. The liquid sample which we are using here is mostly the serum I have told you and one very important recommendation is that we avoid the hemolytic sample 
because if we take the hemolytic sample then it will release the free hemoglobin to the nitrocellulose membrane which will result on a background color which is difficult to deal with so always avoid hemolytic sample we use a clear liquid sample and this liquid sample moves from sample path towards the conjugate pan and then to nitrocellulose membrane and ending in the absorbent pan through capillary action and because of this capillary action it is moving rapidly and that is why the test uh, results is being uh, studied very rapidly within 15 minutes assuming the sample to be positive and containing the antigen the sample moves towards the conjugate pan which has a detector conjugate and the detector conjugate is having the labeled antibody we remember that it has the colloidal gold labeled antibody so upon the sample liquid sample coming in contact with the detector conjugate the antigen from the liquid sample binds with the labeled antibody of the conjugate and it forms an antigen labeled antibody complex or the immunocomplex this antigen and labeled antibody immunocomplex moves further towards the cell nitrocellulose membrane towards the test line along with the liquid sample now on this test line we have a second antibody which is now different from the first antibody which was present in the detector conjugate the difference is that in the detector conjugate we had the labeled antibody whereas the antibody which is present on the test line this is the unlabeled antibody so the antigen and labeled antibody immune complex which was formed on this detector conjugate pan now it moves further and comes in contact with the test line which is having the unlabeled antibody immobilized on the nitrocellulose membrane on the test line and it forms the complex with the second antibodies and in this complex formation this analyte or the antigen it gets sandwiched between these two antibodies it gets sandwiched between the labeled antibody from the conjugate and the unlabeled antibody which is immobilized on the test line so this sandwich complex results in the formation of colored line which indicates the presence of antigen of interest in the sample and it shows whether the test is positive or negative colored line always shows that the test is positive because colored line is formed only when the antigen is present in the sample and the sandwich immune complex is formed if the sample is negative then it means it has no antigen and there is no sandwich immune complex formed on the test line so we do not get any colored test line this can be easily studied from this picture here we have not got we haven't got any colored test line it means the test is negative and it also means that sample is not having antigen and because it is not having antigen it is not forming any sandwiched complex which is resulting in non colored test line now the very interesting question that arises is that why do we always get the control line positive even if the sample is negative because what we have seen here is that this antibody must bind with the antigen to form the sandwich complex to get the colored line but in case of control line when the sample is negative and it is not having antigen then why do we get the colored line so the answer is that the antibodies which is present on this control line this is different from the antibodies which is present on the test line on the test line we are having the anti antigen antibody it means that the antibodies which is present on the test line is against the antigen which is present in the sample whereas in the control line the antibody is not against the antigen in the sample 
means then the antibody is the anti mouse immunoglobulin it is the anti mouse antibody which has no relation with the antigen present in the sample therefore even if the negative sample is not having the antigen we do not need it to get a colored line on control so guys this was the principle of the immunochromatographic assay and now we come to the advantages and disadvantages of the assay the advantage of the immunochromatography assay is that the results are obtained very rapidly due to the capillary action and that is we get in around 15 to 20 minutes and that is why these kits are also known as the rapid kits they are cheaply and widely available in the market and the test can be performed by unskilled labor and we do not require expensive machines for it but apart from so many advantages we have one major disadvantage which is that the tests are less sensitive and we always need more confirmatory tests for the final interpretation of the result therefore these immunochromatographic tests can be used only as screening test and they are never confirmatory so guys hope you like this video and kindly subscribe to it and for more information keep on watching other videos see you again